Hi, 514th Airmen family and friends. Welcome back to Wellness 52, presented by the 514th Airmen and Family Readiness Center. My name is Master Sergeant Derek DeRosa. Great to have you here today. Hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. Today's topic is, is different, and I think you'll find it really interesting, uh, especially now, given the pandemic and how we're online more and more in 2020 and unfortunately into 2021. It's called Social Media and the Comparison Trap. We're going to talk about... Uh, the fact that, you know, given the prevalence of social media and our ability to kind of go online and, and see what other people are doing, how sometimes we use that as a comparison or evaluation tool. And so we're going to get into kind of the problem with that, the process, and then uh, some solutions. So just a quick disclaimer here. Table of context, as I said, we'll get into uh, the comparison theory, comparison process, comparison problem, and then we'll talk about solutions before wrapping things up. Everybody is a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it is stupid. By Albert Einstein. I want you to take a second and think about that quote. What does it mean? What does it mean to you? And then we'll, we'll, we'll go back to it at the end of the presentation. Uh, if you don't have a, a strong opinion and belief right now. We are living in an area or a time of perfectionism. No matter who you are, where you are, or what you're doing with your life, you're never good enough. You want proof? Just turn on the TV and watch as advertisers sell you and reasons you need their products or services so that you can measure up to everyone else. Every day, we're bombarded with images of the unattainable, unattainable on social media. You feel great about your body until you scroll Instagram and realize you're a far cry from winning a beauty contest. There are magic pills for weight loss, anxiety, sleep, depression, and so on. As a result, we're constantly questioning our self-worth, self-image, and self-esteem. Oh. Look who just got engaged on a secluded beach in paradise. Look who just had another adorable baby. Look who just landed their dream job with a great company. Look who just bought a beautiful house in the perfect neighborhood. Look who just came back from a backpacking trip to Southeast Asia. Look who just lost 30 pounds and now has a six pack. When you see these things online through social media outlets, how does it make you feel? Does it make you feel happy for others? Or does it make you feel jealous or depressed even? Does it inspire and motivate you? Or does it make you question the decisions you made in life? Stop comparing yourself to others. Social media is a static and distorted personal highlight reel. And we'll get into why in a second. The fact is, someone will always be better than you. Yes, it's true. More intelligent, more athletic, more powerful, more successful, more popular, more wealthy, more attractive, and so on. You get the idea. The funny thing though, someone will always be less than you. Less attractive, less wealthy, less popular, less successful, less powerful, less athletic, less intelligent. See, social comparison theory was first proposed in 1954 by a psychologist named Leon Festinger. He suggested that people have an innate drive to evaluate themselves based on comparison with others, whether it's looks, talents, possessions, and more. Um, and it's more prevalent today than ever before due to social media. And the fact that we can go online and not only do we see our friends and family, what they're up to and what they're doing, but we also see strangers, whether we're scrolling Instagram or TikTok or regardless, what have you. Now, we can break this down to two different types. Upward social comparisons, that's when we compare ourselves to others who we think are better than we are. You've probably, you've probably witnessed this firsthand. And I'd ask you, how does it make you feel? Does it make you feel motivated and inspired? Or does it make you feel maybe jealous, resentful, 
or even depressed. On the other hand, we have downward social comparisons. That's when we compare ourselves to others who we think aren't as good as we are. Now, how does that make you feel? Does it make you feel confident, proud, or satisfied? Or perhaps even superior, smug, or arrogant? Rick Warren said, you'll either think yourself worse than someone else or better than someone else. Neither of these is good. Stop comparing. But let each one test his own work and then his reason to boast will be in, in himself alone and not his neighbor. The comparison process. Making comparisons, as I said, is easier than ever these days because information is available at our fingertips 24 seven. And it doesn't just come from our friends, family, colleagues, and associates, but from strangers because everyone brought, well, not everyone, but many people broadcast their lives publicly for all the world to see. We can compare jobs, cars, relationships, clothing, vacations, uh, children, baby photos, et cetera. The list, the possibilities for comparison are endless. Um, we're, we're bombarded with displays of accomplishment, triumph, and celebration. Um, and comparing ourselves to others is faster, easier, and more prolific. Not only do the, these platforms on social media give us the ability to compare our lives with others, but they give us the opportunity to compare the extent and magnitude of the reaction we receive, which has the power to add or just subtract from our perceived value of the accomplishment. Quantitative, by the number of reactions or likes, qualitative, by the number and depth of comments. Here's an example. Imagine this scenario. You busted your butt for six months. You ran five times a week with the dreams of finishing your first marathon. Finally, your hard work pays off and you cross the finish line after running 26.2 miles in the New York City Marathon. But wait a second, did it really happen if you didn't post it on social media? So you post a picture with your marathon medal grinning ear to ear for everyone to see. You receive 40 likes and 12 comments. You feel like you're on top of the world. Suddenly, elation turns sour, displeasure and discontent sets in because shortly after your post, one of your best friends uh, shows a picture, posts a picture of them crossing the Ironman finish line after 140.6 miles of swimming, biking, and running, which generates on 100 likes and 25 comments. So suddenly your accomplishment isn't so grand anymore, is it? Now, instead of feeling happy and cheerful, you feel lousy and bitter because you compared your accomplishment with your friends. So you can see here how quickly emotions change when you use someone else's goals as a benchmark for your own success and fulfillment. Theodore Roosevelt said, comparison is the thief of joy. And it couldn't be said any better. Comparison kills the joy of achievement. Here's the process. Um, you know, the comparisons can be positive or negative. As we, we mentioned earlier, there's upward and downward social comparisons. Now, either of these can be positive or negative. Um, it's not necessarily always a bad thing if you channel it in the right way. It can serve as a driving force that helps you work harder and strive higher. You see others as acts of inspiration instead of adversaries and competitors. You learn and are motivated by them and put yourself in a better position to accomplish your own hopes, goals, and dreams. With proper perspective, you will appreciate, who are, you will appreciate other people who are doing bigger, better, or different things. It's well known that athletes thrive off competition. Um, and you can use it to bring the best out in yourself. At the same time, recognizing that your abilities are above someone else's can also deliver a boost to your confidence and self-esteem. So that's that downward social comparison. But too much, of course, may lead to arrogance or conceit. Now, comparisons are usually negative, um, unfortunately, and, and that has the ability to impact our health, emotional health, and well-being. They make us feel small, insecure, inadequate, and unhappy because there's always someone better out there. Instead of focusing and working on what we can control, we see ourselves as failures and let self-pity obstruct our drive to succeed and change who we, excuse me, who we are today into something better tomorrow. Unfortunately, there are no boundaries or limits to what or who you can compare yourself to. 
and our society loves to measure success based on the accomplishments of others. So easy to scroll through and see celebrities and famous people uh, just accomplishing great things. And it's hard not to compare your life with theirs. But the more you focus on other people, the more you begin to question your own path, decisions, state of affairs, and then your confidence is usually compromised. And the stepping stones that lead to your goals turn into mountains. The domino effect happens usually, and you focus on everything that's going wrong with your life instead of everything that's right. You don't have gratitude or appreciation for where you've been, what you're doing, and where you're going. Um, and you focus on the impossible instead of the possible. You see the glass half empty instead of half full. Inadequacy, self-doubt, and frustration sets in because you're so different, you so desperately want what other people have. So instead of working on yourself, you're spending most of your day looking at other people's lives and you're not really living your own. Here's why comparisons don't work. And, and there's many reasons. First and foremost, unequal conditions. There's no two set of environments or circumstances that are exactly alike. There's too many uncontrolled and exogenous variables at play. You only see the front of the scenes. You don't see the behind the scenes. It's not an even playing field. For example, and I'm gonna give scenarios with each of these points. Josh works in the front office at a global bank and I work in the back office at a local bank. Not as prestigious. Yeah, but Josh has a family connection with the chief investment officer who helped him get in the door. You didn't have that chance or opportunity. Number two, age is relative. Chronological age is not the same as life stage. Okay, so what does that mean? You can't compare yourself to people who your age if you're at a different life stage and vice versa. For example, Samantha has a family and owns a beautiful house. While I'm here, I am single and renting a tiny studio apartment. Yeah, but Samantha has been working and saving up for a down payment while you were completing your military service and attending graduate school. So two different life stages there. Number three, it's curated. And this is the biggest thing with social media. Um, people hand select the good things that's going on about their life and they conceal the negative. So you only see the positive, the accomplishments, the feats, the successes, but you don't see everything else. It's distorted. It's a very narrow picture of a person's life. You don't know what happened before or after. You don't know what they did to get where they are. Uh, you, don't, you don't see all the negative things behind it. You only see the positive. You know, for every positive revelation, there's probably a struggle that you don't know about. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, for example, Alan just came back from another amazing trip to Bali while I spent my vacation down the Jersey Shore. Yeah, but he has $10,000 in credit card debt and you are saving for your kid's education. Okay. Number four, best versus worst. And this is, this is interesting too. Usually it's unintentional, it's unconscious. Um, but we typically compare other people's best against our worst. We see someone's best and then we immediately just instinctively measure it against ourselves, even though it might not be our strength. For example, Julie finished, just finished her fifth marathon and I can barely finish a 5K. Yeah, but Julie is single and belongs to a running club in her spare time while I have a girlfriend and volunteer for a nonprofit organization in my free time. Um, so different goals. Number five, measuring success. Success is very subjective. Everyone has their own definition of success and measurement of success. It could mean wealth, status, power for one person versus another person might see success as independence, time, um, and relationships. But one thing's for certain, and that's that it shouldn't be measured based on what other people think. For example, Josh is more successful than me because he, wear ex he wears expensive suits and drives fancy cars. Yeah, but Josh works 80 hours per week and is lonely while well, you have a great work-life balance and you have plenty of time to spend with your family. Number six, hidden feelings. We only know what we see. What really matters is what's inside, and that's our internal emotions and feelings. You can't judge a book by its cover. Caitlin, for example, Caitlin is extremely popular and has a ton of friends. She's so happy. 
no, actually, it's just a facade. And in private, she's very depressed because most of her friends are superficial, while you have a small circle of friends that are authentic, loyal, and trustworthy. How many times do you hear about a famous person or just anyone where they seem so happy and then it turns out they're depressed and, and uh, you know, it's just, it happens. Um, number seven, opportunity and luck. Kind of touched on this earlier, but of course, talent and hard work matter, but a number of studies and books have suggested that luck and opportunity play f a far greater role than skill, hard work, and motivation in determining success in life. Unfortunate, but true. For example, Joe is the CFO of a large public company, and I am only a financial analyst at a small private company. Yeah, but Joe had a boss who was a great mentor and sent him up for success. While you're lucky if your boss even says hello in the morning. Missing information. We only see the finished product. We don't see the beginning or middle, the bad moments, the emotional breakdowns, and the failures, the thousands of hours spent preparing and working towards the achievement. You can't compare your beginning or middle to someone else's end. For example, Samantha is such a talented artist, and I can hardly paint by number. Yeah, but Samantha's been painting every day for the last three years, while you just started painting every weekend for the last three months. Can I compare the two, right? And I like this quote a lot. Don't compare your life to others. There's no comparison between the sun and the moon. They shine when it's their time. Comparison problem in the workplace, whether it's your civilian or military workplace. Um, there's a lot of competition, right? For promotion, for special job opportunities. And so um, it may strain professional relationships uh, when you compare yourself to others and vice versa. People may act congenial and give best wishes to their current workers, but in reality, not all of them are rooting for their peers to succeed because they have a win-lose attitude and see others as competitors and adversaries instead of colleagues and friends. Knowledge sharing, when people feel threatened um, by the success of others, they may conceal knowledge, information, and resources because they use it as a personal competitive advantage. They use it as leverage and power over their colleagues. And when this happens, everyone loses drama and gossip. When people are focused on others instead of themselves, they are more likely to engage in office politics. The consequences are very severe, at least a toxic work environment and a gradual decline of trust and morale, lowers productivity, divisiveness, increases divisiveness, and even may cause backstabbing. Stress and anxiety. When you compare yourself to others in the workplace, you're constantly worrying about their performance relative to your own. You can't focus on yourself. And it leads to stress and anxiety, which has the potential to lower productivity and increase the risk for errors from a lack of focus. Envy, jealousy, and resentment. It's when people desire what their colleagues have, like promotions, recognition, exciting projects, work assignments. And unfortunately, uh, this happens and favoritism raises the possibility of, of conflict. Okay, so now what do we do? How do we, what are some solutions to kind of prevent ourselves from comparing our, comparing, from using comparisons in a negative way? First and foremost, practice self-awareness. Um, you need to recognize when it happens. When you start comparing yourself to others, you have to recognize when that happens and have the courage to do something about it. It usually happens subconsciously um, and instinctively, as I said before. So you have to really make a concerted effort to catch yourself and then identify the triggers that kind of prompted it, prompted it in the first place. Uh, the biggest trigger for most of us is scrolling social media, um, but it also may be prompted by other means like just being in contact with certain people and activities like walking or driving through a really expensive shopping district or like neighborhood with luxury houses, um, that might make you compare those uh, things with, with your current state of affairs. So don't, don't get into the habit of doing that. Try to avoid it. The best thing you do is, is, is show gratitude. You know, remember and appreciate all the good in your life. And then you'll be less vulnerable to comparison and envy like make a habit um, every day to kind of write down 
three things that you're grateful for at the end of each day. And studies show that people who regularly practice gratitude um, by appreciating and reflecting good and positive things they are thankful for have a heightened sense of well-being, happiness, and satisfaction. Three, create goals. Don't use your peers as benchmarks for success. That's just a recipe for failure and disappointment. Uh, we need to kind of come up with our own needs, values, interests, and goals, and then use who we were yesterday as a benchmark for who we are today. Make those goals smart, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound to your own individual aspirations. Uh, successful people are focused on continuous growth and self-improvement, learning new things, um, not settling for the status quo. You're never too old and you're not you're, ne you're never too old to learn something new or to, to, to obtain a new goal or to, to try something different. Exercise self-reflection. Compare yourself, as I said, who you are today to who you were yesterday. Um, you know, as long as you have specific goals, then that's easy to do um, and then monitor. And also just not for just from yesterday, but who you were last week, last month, a few years ago. Progress is progress, and it doesn't matter how slow or small it is. Just keep pushing forward and never give up. Know your strengths. You're successful for who you are, not who you aren't. So, like, so stop focusing on your weaknesses and start focusing on your strengths. That's what makes you unique, different, and valuable. Um, and people who focus on their strengths are generally proven to be happier, less stressed, confident, and more satisfied. Now, it doesn't mean you shouldn't work on your weaknesses. You certainly should, because that's the only way you'll challenge yourself. But don't forget who you are and what makes you authentic and true to yourself. What differentiates you from everyone else? I mean, use that. Continuing. Enjoy the journey. We each have our own unique journey. Uh, you want to make sure you love your past, your present, and your future. Be proud of yourself, your achievements, and your triumphs. No matter how large or small they are, find your passion and purpose in life. Um, learn from your past mistakes and successes. Share that knowledge with others. Like I said, practice continuous self-improvement. Pursue your goals, not the goals of, any, of someone else that you see. Um, have your own unique goals. And don't pursue goals, you know, what, what's the latest thing that society is tending to, to, to glorify. No. That's just noise. Swap comparison for inspiration. Instead of feeling jealous, inferior, threatened, or demotivated by others, feel inspired and be happy for their successes and achievements. Live your life with the belief that there's always something you can learn from others. If your Cali's got a great, got a, a promotion and you didn't, and you didn't, you know, instead of feeling resentful, take an internal audit and determine ways you can get yourself up for success the next time around. Have a win-win attitude. Rid yourself of a winner takes all mentality. A win-win attitude creates mutual beneficial relationships built on strong trust. Life isn't a zero sum game. Happiness is not a limited resource. Someone else's happiness and success doesn't mean that your life is less valuable or important. This one's really important. Log off. Take a break from social media. The next time you're on social media, kind of take an inventory and a pulse of how it makes you feel. And if it makes you feel negatively at the end of the day, then disconnect and limit your usage. You know, unfollow people uh, that elicit negative emotions or fear of missing out. Um, it's just, it's more and more, it's just becoming a place where people grow and market their own personal brand. And it's just unhealthy when you obsess over it daily. Like I said in the first few slides, it's, it's everyone's personal highlight reel, reel, reel excuse me. You don't see all the negativity. You only see the positive and, and what's glorified. Um, and if you're, you're on social media constantly, you know, it's just taking time away from what you should be working on. And that's dedicating, to, you're dedicating your time to what you can control, your own life, your own goals and aspirations. Lastly, love yourself. There's more than 7 billion people in the world and only one you. You're important, original, and unique. You have to recognize your own self-worth and be grateful for what you have. Accept your laws with grace um, and honor. No one's perfect. Um, 
And also, you know, someone else doesn't have to fail for you to succeed and vice versa. Don't define your value by comparing yourself to others. No one has a perfect life. And what you see on social media is like watching a fake reality TV show. Be confident and proud of who you are, where you've been, what you've done, and the direction you're going. When you're happy with your own life, you care less about what everyone else is doing, and you focus on what matters. Here are some signs that you can recognize and, and use to determine that maybe it's time to take a social media detox. Uh, you feel unhappy after looking through your feeds. You can't imagine going a day without it. That means you're obsessed with you know, going on social media. It's the first thing you do at the morning and the last thing you do at night. Um, you, you really seek validation uh, through likes and comments. You have fear of missing out. Um, everything that happens in life you, f you, you feel needs to be publicized. Um, you know, if it's leading to increased stress, lower confidence, trouble sleeping, weight gain, loneliness, fatigue, etc., it's time to take a break. And even if you're not experiencing these symptoms, I suggest start with a day, just one day, don't go on social, and then move it to two days and three days and so on. I'm not saying social media is bad, and if you're running a business based on social media, you probably need to log on daily uh, to keep the engagement with your customers and audience. But it's, it's not a bad thing to take a break every once in a while. Now we go back to that quote from the beginning. And you probably, have, if you didn't before, have a better idea of, of what it means. You know, we're all different. We're all unique. Um, we all have our each individual, you know, talents, abilities, um, talent and abilities, uh, including, a, you know, intelligence. So, like, if Einstein, say Einstein, you know, we judged Einstein based on his ability to sing or carve wood instead of physics, we probably wouldn't have considered him stupid. Um, so, in other words, find your fields, whatever it is, and excel by it and your own standards. Um, you have to accept that people will be different than you, different, not better than you and not less than you. No one is better than you and no one is less than you. We cannot be ranked. We're all born with the same level of dignity, value, and human worth. And we all develop at a different rate, socially, mentally, and physically. So your journey doesn't have to be the same as someone else's. Uh, as you recall, life stage is different than chronological age. So there's no rule that says you have to be married by 25, have three kids by the time you're 30, or vice president, at your company by the time you're 40. So don't let the outside, the influences of the outside world dictate, dictate what you should be doing with your life or the pace of what you're doing it. You know, the only thing you should worry about is being a better person than you were yesterday. Stop focusing on what you can't control, which is other people, and focus on what you can control, which is yourself, your opinions, your attitudes, your beliefs. This is a video that I'm going to play for you. Uh, talks and expands on the topic more with uh, examples. Bring yourself to. Oh, let me start. You're playing a sort of on you and say, man, I wish that was me. You know you do. Everybody does. But I bet you never compared yourself to me. Haven't heard of me? I do have my own TV show in the middle of the night. When I started, I wanted to be as big as Jerry Seinfeld. I'm not, and yet I'm a pretty happy guy. Here's why. I stopped comparing myself to other people. Seriously, that's the whole trick. Here's what I mean. If my happiness were based on being the biggest comedian in the business, I'd be mad at whoever was getting more Netflix specials than me. I have zero. If it were based on having the best TV ratings, I'd be mad at Jimmy Fallon. He beats me every night. And if it were based on being rich, I'd be mad at a lot of people. And even if I were rich, really rich, like number 10 on the Forbes 400 rich, I'd be mad that there were nine other people richer than me. It never ends. Comparing yourself to others creates a totally unrealistic measure for what constitutes success. And I know, because the entertainment business is all about unrealistic expectations. All through my career, I'd meet with satisfied customers after my shows and they'd say, hey, you're good. Maybe someday you'll be successful like Jerry Seinfeld. 
he's the measure of success, the top guy. When someone tells you they're a doctor, you don't say, well, maybe someday you'll cure a disease and save millions of lives, just like Jonas Salk did for polio or a lawyer. Oh, wow. So what's your ultimate goal? The Supreme Court? Do you see how crazy that sounds? Professional success is about making a living, pursuing excellence, and finding meaning in what you do. When I first started doing stand-up, I was a nobody. It took more than a decade playing in front of tuned out crowds before it started paying the bills. 10 years is a lot of time to tell jokes for no money to people who aren't laughing. In those days, I spent a lot of time thinking about the comedians I admired, the guys at the top. I wanted those big sold out houses I wasn't playing, the big paydays I wasn't making, the TV specials I wasn't doing. And not just their success, their talent. I'd look at comics like George Carlin, Robin Williams, and Louis C.K. They were all able to turn their dark, personal struggles into brilliant comedy. I envy their talent, but I wouldn't want the dark, personal struggles that went along with it. If you don't factor in everything about whoever you're comparing yourself to, you're playing a sort of mix and match game that doesn't exist in the real world. Here's one of life's little truths. Everyone is a package deal. You can't view one element of someone else's life in isolation. That's cheating. You can't say, I want Louis C.K.'s money and fame, Jay Leno's car collection, and Tom Shalhoub's wife and kids. That person doesn't exist. If he did, he'd be pretty cool. I would definitely want to hang with him. Everyone has pain in their lives. Think of anybody who you know really well. You know, the awful stuff they've had to deal with, the demons they battle. How many dead rock stars, movie stars, and yes, comedians does it take to convince us all that everyone's life is hard? Face it, you really don't want someone else's life. You want your own life, only better. But that's the thing. You can make your life better by not doing something. Comparing yourself to other people. Back when I was a nobody, I wanted to sell out the biggest venues and have a primetime TV show with millions of viewers. Now I sell out small venues and I'm on in the middle of the night with half a million viewers. And I appreciate every one of them. I guess when I compare myself now to myself then, I'm doing okay. You should try it. I'm Tom Shalhoub for Prager University. To subscribe to our... I'm Tom Shalhoub. Okay. To wrap things up, life is not a script. Social media today has become everyone's personal highlight reel. Excuse the misspelling. A distorted hyperbolical a utopian portrayal of their existence. But remember, all that glitters is not gold. Life is not a popularity contest. You don't get a prize for the most likes, comments, or retweets, and the amount of engagement you receive is not going to validate how exciting, how amazing, exciting, or successful your life is. Life is not a spectator sport. Stop sitting on the sidelines and watching things happen. Get in the game and make things happen. Life is not a dress rehearsal. You only get one shot. There are no second chances. Don't waste your most precious commodity, time. Stop putting off your dreams and waiting for the perfect time. The right time is now. Life is not perfect. Don't let fear, failure, embarrassment hold you back. Get outside of your comfort zone. You need to take risks and chances to live life to the fullest. When you fall down, learn from your mistakes and bounce back stronger. Life is not a scientific study. There is no control group. We're all different, raised by different parents, brought up in different communities, gifted with different abilities, personal advantages, and personal disadvantages. Lastly, life is not a competition. There are no winners or losers. Your success, value, and self-worth isn't relative to someone else's. The only person you should be competing against is yourself. When you're constantly focused on everyone else, you ignore what really matters and what you can't control, and that's you. So there's, there's a difference between wanting to be better and wanting to be better than someone else. Reject any notion that you need to external proof of your own self-worth. The only person you can compare yourself is yourself to is you. Um, 
You know, when you compare yourself to others, it's a distraction and a waste of valuable time. Your energy is better served by improving yourself. Okay, guys, thank you very much for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed the content of this presentation. If you have any questions, uh, you can reach out to me. I'm really passionate about this subject. I actually wrote an article a while ago based on this very topic. Uh, so you see a link there. PowerPoint slides are available. Feedback, literally two minutes of your time to, to give feedback uh, so we can revamp and improve this next time around. That's all for today. Hope you have a wonderful holiday. Um, stay safe and healthy with your family and friends as well. And we'll see you in 2021. Thanks again. Take care.